Hey, what's going on? In this video, I'm gonna talk about how I switched out my drivetrain from a chain to this awesome Veer belt drive that I ordered from veercycle.com. So I'm gonna get into what it took to install this belt drive on the Super 73 S2. But first I wanna answer the question, why did I do it? Well, when I was first turned on to belt drives just recently, I thought they looked super cool. And it would be a fun thing to add to my Super 73 S2 to help it give, you know, a little bit more of a motorbike feel. Now I know that there's chains on motorcycles, there's also belt drives on motorcycles, but I just thought that it made the aesthetics of the bike look really cool. But as I began to research belt drives a little bit more, I found out that they're a lot more durable than your chain system. They are easier to clean. You don't have to oil them. And in this particular one that I got from Veer Cycle, it's reinforced with carbon fiber strands. So this thing is probably gonna last me for the lifetime of this bike. Let's get a closer look at what this system is and how it will work with the Super 73 S2. Now, one of the major limitations to adding a belt drive to any bike is that you need to figure out a way to get the belt through the frame and onto the bike so you can mount it on the front hub and the rear hub. That's where this Veer Split Belt Pro comes into play. Let me show you how it works. So you might be able to see how it works here, but you'll see it a little bit better when I show the unboxing of this product in just a little bit. But basically this is a split belt and it comes to a point right here and you attach the belt to itself using these rivets. So the kit is supplied with a riveter, so you don't need to worry about picking up one of those, but you just slide the rivets through the provided holes in the belt, and then you just rivet it, and it becomes nice and secure. As far as components go, you just have your front hub, your belt, and your rear hub that you need to add to the bike. Let me show you what's included in the kit, and then I'll talk through what it took to install this thing. So in this particular kit that I ordered, it comes with the belt, obviously. Then of course, this is the sprocket that goes behind the pedals. So that's gonna be the front sprocket. And then we have the rear sprocket, which is standard with most free hubs. Now, because we fasten the belt with rivets, it comes with plenty of rivets, and then also, this handy riveter that will work for the job. Then of course, these are all spacers to make sure that I have the two sprockets aligned perfectly. You know, the front and the back, we gotta make sure that that belt's on there straight. It also comes with this quick start guide, but there are resources online that tell you more about this particular kit. Then of course, we have a sticker, and if all goes well, I'll put it on my sticker wall. So as most bikes with belt drive systems, they actually need to have a break in the frame so that when you need to add a new belt to your bike, you can slide it through the frame somehow and then attach it to your front hub and rear hub. Again, that's where this Veer Split Belt Pro makes it possible to add a belt drive to pretty much any single speed bike. A couple of other things to note about a belt drive system is it's not the cheapest solution. This kit cost me uh, about $350 and I just wanted it because I thought it looked cool. I like the idea of not having to oil a chain and the idea of it lasting forever. So hopefully the savings in maintenance makes up for the cost of the system. The other thing about a belt drive system is you can't add it to a bike that has a tensioner or an external gear cassette, you know, like your standard bike that has multiple gears because you can't have the belt jump from gear to gear to gear like you would on a regular chain bike. Now there are belt drive solutions for e-bikes, especially ones with some internal gear systems where the belt itself isn't moving across the gears, but the gear switching takes place on an internal gear box. And another thing is they don't make these yet to work with any sort of chain tensioner. So the R or the RX, if you're looking to do this conversion, unfortunately, that's not a possibility at this time. However, if you own a ZX, or an S2, then it's definitely something you could look into adding to your bike. So I wanted to make a video of a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I added this to my Super 73 S2. But as I got into the project, I realized I needed to focus more on the project and not so much on shooting video. So in this segment of the video, I'm gonna walk you through what I did to get this added to my bike and to show you all the parts that I removed from the Super 73 S2 and the tools it took to do it. The first thing I did was remove the chain guard 
but after you install the belt drive you can see that you could actually put the chain guard back on if you like that look but because i wanted to show off my new belt drive system i opted to leave it off the next thing i did was remove the chain i was stumped on this at first thinking that i needed a chain breaking tool but the chain that comes with your super 73 you actually don't need any tools at all what you do is you find the link with these two rivets on it see how those have dimpled rivets and you actually take the chain like this make it rigid like you see here and use your thumbs and push away from you and as you do this piece will pop out and you're able to remove the chain your super 73 s2 comes with this bracket that holds your chain guard up above the chain so if you're looking at your bike right now you'll see that this is what holds the chain it actually sits back here but it holds the chain guard off of the chain somewhat like this now i wanted to remove it so what i had to do was remove the crank arm and i had to remove it on both sides but to do it you actually need a crank puller tool they're very easy to use and they're probably inexpensive but i actually got this in a kit for another video that i'm going to make converting a regular bike into an electric bike so i actually had this laying around which i was grateful for but you take an eight millimeter allen wrench remove this bolt screw this in like so and then begin tightening with like an adjustable crescent wrench or something like that and as you do it pushes against the crank arm here and actually pulls it out off of your crank shaft once you get your crank arm removed you'll see something like this it is the bottom bracket it has those teeth on it in there hopefully you can see that but you'll need a tool like this it is a bottom bracket remover you stick that in like a socket and then you begin twisting now there's a couple of things to note on this step the first is on the left side it will be hidden behind the pedal assist sensor so um, i just used a screwdriver to pry this off very carefully and then that silver piece like you see over here on the right side is exposed and then this one turns lefty loosey righty tighty just like you're tightening anything however on the right side a lot like when you add the pedals to your bike this one turns opposite so it's lefty tighty righty loosey so just think you have to turn it counterclockwise so you loosen this side and take it out first then you remove this side and you're able to slide this off now of course i'm trying to do my best to explain this in a way that makes the most sense and that you can envision it on your own bike but if any of this makes you uncomfortable then you could actually take this kit to your bike shop and they could help you install it now because i removed this chain guard bracket it left a space between the bottom bracket and the hub of the bike and i wasn't sure if i needed to replace that with any sort of spacer luckily the kit from beer comes with some spacers that are actually meant for the rear hub i'm going to get into that in just a second but i was able to use that spacer to replace that gap that was created by that chain guard bracket but one thing i did have to do is take a dremel and cut down those little teeth i just sanded them off basically and cut those down so it made a perfect circle and i was able to slide it over the threads of the bottom bracket and use it think of it kind of like a washer and so now i have a nice spacer right there that um, helps hold everything in place so that was something that i did i just want to throw that in as a side note but for those of you that want to keep this on your bike then you can forget everything i just said the next step is to remove the stock sprocket for the chain now you can remove it and it's super easy to do all you do is loosen these four bolts but as you slide it off you can see it doesn't actually slide over the pedals so you are going to have to remove a pedal to get this off the nice thing for me is i didn't have to remove a pedal because this sprocket for the belt drive actually fit right over the top of it and i was able to hook it in place another thing to note is you can actually mount this sprocket on the inside or outside of the hub here and i mounted it on the inside and that actually made the belt line up perfectly with the rear hub and we're going to get into that but i just really like how this looks again i mounted the belt sprocket on the inside of this crank hub here so you can see it's behind it i then put the crank arms back on i used a rubber mallet to kind of pound it in place but then as you tighten this bolt here then it just tightens everything back together and you can see it's solid it's not loose 
and it's a nice secure fit there. Alrighty, now let's talk about the rear hub. This is where it got a little bit complicated for me and I actually did have to reach out to my local bike shop for some help in removing this and it was because I didn't have the right tools to do so. Now let me show you the tools and then I'll talk about the setup back here. It was actually surprisingly easy once I got this off. A tool that the bike shop used was similar to this tool. It's called a chain whip. And what it does is it holds this sprocket in place on the hub while using a cassette removal tool. It looks similar to this to loosen the cassette lock that holds your sprocket in place. So let's see what that looks like on the bike. So of course you're gonna remove the whole tire and then you have these black dropout plates. That's this thing that I'm touching right here. And you need to remove that as well. You just remove it by undoing this nut. There is a washer there. You pull that off, then you pull off the dropout plate and then this area is exposed here. Now looking at it at this angle, this is your cassette lock here. So you just need to remove that. Then there's a spacer and then that's where the sprocket sits. And then over here on the back side is a spacer area as well. The Veer kit comes with a bunch of different spacers that you can use to give you the correct positioning because you wanna make sure that the belt is perfectly in line with itself. If not, then it's gonna slip off the back here. Well, I was happy to find out that the spacers provided by Super 73 were an exact match. Then the bike shop slid on the sprocket and then there's another little spacer in there and then they locked it in place, of course, using that cassette lock tool. Now with the sprocket in this position like so, and the front hub and sprocket in this position with the sprocket on the inside of the spider here, I think that's what it's called, then that gave me a perfect alignment on the whole system and I didn't need to fidget with any sort of adjusting. So if this is something that you're going to do and you're doing it yourself, just know that you can keep the spacers from Super 73 in the exact order that they are or you can tell the bike shop that's helping you out that that's how it's done. And with all that being done, the last step is to attach the belt to itself. Now the way that they describe it, and you can find the instructions on how to do this on their website, is that you have the male end or the pointed end pointing towards the front of the bike and the V pointed towards the rear of the bike. You can kind of see it here. Then you take the provided rivets, slide it through the hole and use the rivet tool to then rivet the belt all together. When you do this, you wanna make sure that your tire is slid completely forward. So, you know, using these two bolts as reference, they'd be all the way forward. And then once you get the belt on, then you slide the tire back to get the correct tension. So I have it fairly tight here. I think that this is good to go. There are some ways that you know if your belt is tight enough, but I think with this system here, it's pretty straightforward on tightening it, but the tension feels pretty good. I don't have any issues with the belt slipping off and I am very happy with how this turned out. Hopefully you stuck with me through all that. I know it was a lot. Again, I wish I could have showed you the step by step, but I did my best to explain it. And just to reiterate, I'm not a bike expert. I was able to do this myself. It is kind of a DIY, but if any of that makes you feel uncomfortable, then of course, take it to a bike shop and get it done properly. But I'm very happy with how it turned out. And I'm gonna put up here on the screen, the specs of exactly what I ordered. So if this is something that you wanna order, you'll know exactly what to order. Now this was for the Super 73 S2, something that they do ask for before you order the belt, because it's important that you get the right length is that you measure from this bolt to this bolt so from the middle of there to the middle of there and convert you know if you're in the US convert the inches to the metric to the millimeters now this video wasn't sponsored they didn't send me the kit I paid for it I'm just really excited about it and wanted to show it to you I'm very happy again with how it turned out and I hope that you found this video super interesting because one thing that I stress here is that, you know, there's so many Super 73s out there on the road. If you wanna keep them stock, that is fine. But one of my favorite things about owning a Super 73 is just making it my own. You can see I've added a bunch of different stuff with it. In fact, in a future video, I'm gonna add up exactly how much I've spent 
on my Super 73 because I seriously have no idea, but I think it'll be fun to find out. Anyway, that does it for this video. I hope that you liked it. And if you did, of course, hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this conversion. If you liked it, if you think I'm crazy, or if you're apprehensive about doing it and you want to do it and you have a question, go ahead and ask that below. And of course, while you're down there, hit that subscribe button. Have a great rest of your day.